VBA257 is the call sign of Canada's only ATSE 3.0 station, and I happen to live relatively close to it because I am in the Buffalo region. VBA257 consists of a single frequency network of three ATSE 3.0 broadcasts that are all timed perfectly and working together. It's kind of a little bit like mesh Wi-Fi, except for broadcast. They changed their configuration soon after I made my original video and it required a decently high SNR in order to receive anything. Well, they've just changed it again to the point where being here almost 60 miles away from where the transmitters are with an extremely low powered signal that is not line of sight at all to my location, I can receive this signal. So POP0 is QPSK with a code rate of 3 by 15 and that has a negative 3 decibel SNR. You could be 3 decibels below the noise floor and still get this station in. To give you an idea at how weak this signal can be to still be received, it's pretty incredible. For instance, ATSE 1.0 requires 15.2 decibels of signal to noise ratio in order to come in. This PLP0 at negative three decibels in order for it to come in requires only 1.51% of the signal power, and it can be received with a received signal of 66 times less than what it takes for ATSC 1.0 to come in, which is nearly two orders of magnitude less signal power. This can be received with an extremely, extremely poor signal. So that is already incredible. And on my new Panasonic ATSC 3.0 TV, I basically haven't been able to get rid of it on every single channel scan. The channel guide has been showing up with these five channels from this Canadian ATSE 3.0 broadcast just because of how robust this signal is. I literally can't get rid of it. It's just always coming in. The other PLP, PLP1, has a 9 decibel SNR, and that unfortunately is the only PLP that actually has any TV channels on it. So for the longest time here, for the last couple of weeks, I haven't been able to provide a video or anything explaining what video streams are available just because that PLP requires an SNR that I unfortunately can't get here based on its extremely small output power, the fact that I'm like almost 60 miles away. And honestly, the fact that I'm even able to get in PLP zero is really cool just because it's so robust. But today there was some tropo and I was able to get this in. So what I have up on my computer screen right now is a UTM uh, virtual Windows desktop running Windows 11 with HD home run config graphical user interface and channels for HD Home Run on Mac. The Windows Virtual Machine has all of the signal characteristics and information, and then the Mac is actually playing back the audio and video streams if available. And you'll see that as I'm tapping through channels, three of the channels are on PLP0 and they're not loading anything. So when I tap to play a channel, it cues the HD Home Run to look at PLP0, it sits on it for a little while and then nothing will play. It's like that for the standard definition channel, the HD channel, and the 4K channel for whatever reason. The full HD channel is coded to go to PLP1 and that actually does have a TV stream on it and I was able to play it back as you can see here. But as you're gonna see later in this video, this is actually the only device that I was actually able to get this working on. All of the other ATSC 3.0 equipment that I have was not able to play this back. Student engagement is one of the most important things that the broadcast industry needs. They're the people that are gonna be driving this industry forward and they're the people that are the innovators of the future. I decided to be an advocate for gender equality, building supportive community, driving innovation and excellence. All right, a full review of this TV is coming soon, but I just wanted to show you what this ATSC 3.0 station from Toronto, Ontario, Canada looks like on my new ATSC 3.0 Panasonic TV that I got. The only channel that actually has any audio or video streams behind it that I'm uh, aware of is this VS1 FHD. I know there's some glare with the TV. There we go. I'm going to tap into it. This channel is encrypted. So I don't know what is going on with this Panasonic TV, but it thinks that this Toronto station 
is encrypted. It's not encrypted. Um, so there's some sort of glitch going on with this TV. Um, kind of interesting to see though, the HD Home Run is working with this. All right, so I just wanted to show you what is on this uh, Toronto, Ontario ATSC 3.0 signal. This Panasonic TV doesn't omit anything. So technically, it's supposed to get rid of this DDAAS, which stands for Data Delivery as a Service from our Sinclair ATSC 3.0 station here in the Buffalo market. And it's also supposed to get rid of this SIG signal, which this is, I guess, the Humber College's data casting signal right here. So this is the American data casting signal, and then this is the Canadian data casting signal. And then when you actually go down to the channels, it'll put all the channels on here, VS1 4K, VS1 Full HD, VS1 HD, VS1 Standard Definition. So this TV actually scans in the channels. It actually works, which is really cool. Um, the problem though is some of these other boxes, this GT Media box is not adding this signal at all. So it is, I don't know what the heck is going on with this. I'm going to do try ATSE 3.0 and look at this. It's 12 decibels. This only requires a nine decibel SNR. So we're going to scan this. And, uh, this GT Media box is just a piece of crap. It is, it's got an 11 decibel SNR. The signal is beautiful and it should be getting in PLP zero only requires negative three decibels. And then PLP one requires a nine decibel SNR and it still won't add it in for whatever reason. Again, the HD home run was fine. And this Panasonic TV was getting this in even at negative three decibels with PLP zero. So kind of strange to see here. All right, now I'm going to do a manual scan on RF channel 28 with the Zinwell box. And let's see if this one comes in. Nope. Okay, so after trying out the Zinwell at 600B and the GT Media Converter X1, both of those were not able to add these channels. This one just did. So I don't know what's going on with the software. Again, the Panasonic TV, once it hits that PLP zero, which is at negative three decibels, that'll add the SLT, that'll add all of the guide, you know, information immediately. Um, same with the HD home runs, a little bit more quirky than that, but it's kind of similar. Um, and this one was just able to do it fine. I don't know what's going on with the Zinwell box and the GT Media Converter X1. They are just not handling this well at all. It'll be interesting to see here how it handles channel 00. Yeah, so it got rid of channel 00. And as it should. Of course, I do not have an internet connection. Let's go to that full HD channel. Let's see if it works on the 80th box here. Possible network authorization DRM or antenna reception issue. There should be enough. Um, interesting. It's saying that it's at an 8.65 dB SNR. So, I mean, I am literally playing this station back off of the same splitter on my HD home run client device right now. So this ADTH box is famous for having its receiver sensitivity low. And it's basically saying that it's coming in just barely below the threshold and it doesn't want to display it. Um, I've tried for a little while now and it still won't play it. So um, I'll uh, post an update video in the future if I can get this to play. But it looks like, unfortunately, the ADTH box is not able to play it. So that means the only device that I was able to actually get this to play back on was a client app for the HD Home Run Flex 4K, another dub in the HD Home Run column.